Thank you, everyone. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the prayer and thank you, Sister Dorothy, for the Bible study reading. Right. Uh, welcome, everyone, to our study of Chapter 34 of the Desire of Ages, the Invitation. And uh, what you are going to do before we move into the study, uh, I want us to all sing. Maybe if we stand up and sing because uh, so that at least we'll get our brains working. We've been listening and praying for a while. If we turn to hymn number 463, Peace, Perfect Peace, I'm going to share my screen so that we can all fill our homes with music. And praise to God. 463 in the SDA hymna. Let us pray. Mm. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for you've promised us that you'll keep him in perfect peace, he whose mind is stayed upon you. So we pray that you'll help us to keep our minds stayed on you. We thank you, Lord, for your law. Uh, which is the link that yokes us to you. And so as we open your word, we'll pray that you'll open our hearts. We want to be receptive to your word. We want to learn of you. We want to learn from you. 
open our heart slot to um uh, to the uh, to the leading and to the teaching of the Holy Spirit uh, throughout this study. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, good morning once again and happy Sabbath. And uh, thank you, Elder Desire, for projecting uh, this study to the screen. While you are doing that, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to read our key text. What in chapter 34 of the Desire of Ages, the invitation, and our key text is based on Matthew 11, verse uh, 28 to 30, and it reads, <clears throat> Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Okay, so yesterday we, we, we read the paragraph uh, that begins with in the heart of Christ. I'll reread that paragraph and then if there are any um, comments on that or any things that were outstanding from yesterday's discussion, we can pick them up and then proceed. Uh, she says, in the heart of Christ, where reigned perfect harmony with God, there was perfect peace. He was never elated by applause, nor dejected by censure or disappointment. Amid the greatest opposition and the most cruel treatment, he was still of good courage. But many who profess to be his followers have an anxious, troubled heart because they are afraid to trust themselves with God. They do not make a complete surrender to him, for they shrink from the consequences that such a surrender may involve. Unless they do make this surrender, they cannot find peace. It's interesting that Christ was at peace, at peace amid the greatest opposition. I mean, the Pharisees were plotting his downfall. And when they did arrest him, he received the most cruel treatment, and yet he was at peace. This is the peace that we are being invited to. Any, any thoughts or comments on that? paragraph I think it's really beautiful when I think that um, in the moments that life is the hardest and if we give ourselves to God in those moments those the hardest moments can become the most beautiful moments in our lives and we can be the blessed the most so God is giving us these very hard moments sometimes to to show us that we can trust him and find that rest and Draw closer to him so we must not be afraid of the of the the, the moments where, where things are really hard. We just got to surrender to him as that peace says, and we'll find those are the most precious and beautiful moments in our lives. Amen. 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 Amen for that beautiful reflection. Thank you. Okay, I do not see any other hands up. So we can proceed to the next paragraph. I will ask a reader to please read the next paragraph. 
please. I can read. Thank you. Oh, I don't know what what has happened to my screen. I don't know what has happened to my screen. It's, uh, it's enlarged the letters uh, that some of the words are hiding now. It, yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. It is the love of stuff. Is that the paragraph? Am I right? Yes, 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 it is. Ah, okay. It is the love of self that brings unrest. When we are born from above, the same mind will be in us that was in Jesus. The mind that led him to humble himself that we might be saved. Then we shall not be seeking the highest place. We shall desire to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn of him. We shall understand that the value of our work does not consist in making a show and noise in the world and in being active and zealous in our own strength. The value of our work is in proportion to the impartation of the Holy Spirit. Trust in God brings holier qualities of mind so that in patience we may possess our souls. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Sister Matron, for that reading. So this is telling us some home truths about ourselves that are, we are not selfless. It is because we love ourselves so much that we've got so much unrest. And if we are not born again, if we are not born from above, we will not have the mind of Jesus. The mind of Jesus is what led him to uh, to humility so that we may be saved. And if we were born again, we would not be seeking the highest place, but to sit at the feet of Jesus. If we consider ourselves, do we want to be elevated or are we content with our lot? And the... The next sentence is actually interesting. If I mean, if we, if we understand that the value of our work does not consist in making a big show and noise in the world, but that it depends on the proportion of the Holy Spirit that has been imparted upon us that may change us and that we need to trust God so that he will bring holier qualities to mind and so that we may be patient. Any thoughts about that paragraph? It's interesting that unrest really is the absence of peace. And uh, the Bible tells us that uh, God says, I will keep him in perfect peace, he whose mind is stayed on, on him. And we if we find ourselves restless, it means that self is still on the throne. And we do not have the mind of Jesus. I see that a few hands up. We've got the Tagli Twins, Fair Retreat Ministry, and Sister Ho. Please go ahead and good morning. Good morning, Sabbath blessings, everyone. Yeah, I think Jesus is our example. He often did miracles and then he just walked away. Uh, you know, wasn't there to take the praise and the honor from the people. He just, you know, just walked away, and people didn't know, you know, he didn't he just, just, just did what he had to do, and that's how we have to be. We do what we have to do, but we don't get there. We don't stand around to get the praise and honor, you know, from people. We just got to do it, do it, do it in our quiet way, and um, and it's acceptable to God, you know, when we, you know, we don't bring the glory and honor to ourselves. Yeah. 
Amen. Thank you for that. Because, yeah, he was never elated by applause, nor dejected by censure or disappointment. I find it interesting sometimes, uh, especially when little children, they present something in church and I have heard words like perform, which is a bit troubling. And then people clap their hands and they praise them so much. I don't think that is a godly thing to do. Uh, because if we look at Jesus, as, as Chuckly Twins just said, he just walked away sometimes after after healing or treating or doing something. Thank you very much for, for that thought. Uh, Elder Desire, or are you going to give way to Sister Hope as you normally do? <laughs> Yes, please. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Hope. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, Sister Martha. Good morning, all. And uh, blessed Sabbath. Um, you did mention something so wonderful there. Uh, when we started the paragraph, you did say that uh, if it, it, it is the love of self that brings unrest. And uh, we went on to say that uh, when we are born from above, the same mind will be in us that was in Christ. The mind that led him to humble himself, that we might be saved. Uh, it's so amazing because also in uh, Isaiah 26 and verse 3 and verse 4, if I may read it, it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. It goes on to say, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. But when we read that first sentence, it says, at the end of it, it says, we might be saved. So it indeed is encouraging us that we have to pray that we are not self-centered. You know, self, -cent self brings self-centeredness, selfishness. All that uh, we then turn to ourselves. We, and then in turning to ourselves, we have no rest. Mm. And we are perturbed by the cares of this life, by indeed the burdens we have in our homes, burdens we might have at work or in the community or even in the church. But Christ is saying, no. Right? Uh, your mind be stayed on me uh, so that we are saved, not just saved from the perplexities of our lives, but you see, sin brings us, it degrades us. It's to do with sin. Sin looks to self. And because sin is the transgression of the law. So when we transgress, by looking to our, we transgress by looking to ourselves instead of looking to our perfect Savior, Jesus Christ. So he desires us to be, he wants us to be saved. He wants us to be saved from not just sin, but also from the cares. That's why he says, take my yoke, take my yoke. But his desire that we have rest in him, perfect peace in him. Amen. 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 Thank you for those powerful thoughts. Thank you. Uh, uh, Elder JB, please go ahead. Good morning. Well, good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. 
Yeah, I think in in um when Christ went about doing good, he he was doing the will of the Father who sent him. So he understood his mission and he had no time to waste. He he wasn't here to conform to whatever the religious leaders were doing. So whatever he did was to please the Father. And regardless of whatever consequences will follow. That is why when even when he did um any miracles, any healing and so forth, it was a witness. So it was done for a reason. It wasn't done because he had the power to do so. But he was following what God asked him, what the Father asked him, uh, I mean, to do. Because he was, of course, I mean, um, he had the character of, I mean, of, I mean, of the Father. So that's why he's saying we have to be born from above. And unless we are born from above, it's impossible to please God. Unless we are led by the Holy Spirit, we can do all sorts of things on earth, but it's it will never have an impact on anybody. So the prayer really is for us to allow the Holy Spirit to come into us. Whether we are singing, whether we are giving out books, let it be for the honor and for the glory of God. And sometimes uh, we do things and it's like we're having our own show. We can't have our own show when it's God's business. It's not. That's why he says in Luke 2, 14, 9, uh, they are seeking him in the temple and the parents think, oh, he's lost. But he says, why did you seek me? Knowing not that I must be about my father's business. So he understood his mission. So we have to understand our mission as well. Our mission is for us, I mean, to seek the lost, to seek and serve the lost. That is the only mission why, I mean, we're in God's camp. There is no other mission. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. You know, uh, as you were speaking, Brother JB, I was thinking, you know, that even you you said in in the uh face of opposition Christ continued to do what he had to do and the uh key thing to note what she says is that he was actually of good courage of good cheer so God expects us to even in opposition do the right thing not saying I will do it I will do it but we're not actually doing it in our strength. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that thought. It triggered that thought in my mind. Elder Desire, please go ahead. Thank you, Sister Martha. Good morning, Happy Sabbath, everybody. Morning. Uh, thank you for those uh, powerful thoughts. I wanted to share uh, the same uh, sort of words that uh, she's sharing in this uh, part of the reading. Um, uh, she, she, she also shared the same similar words in another place. Uh, this is from Mount of Blessings, Thoughts from Mount of Blessings, page 16. And uh, she was commenting there on the Beatitudes. Um, now she so 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 because I wanted to 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 first of all just read that line. Uh, it's it's a profound statement. It says it is the love of self that brings unrest. Now in another place, now commenting on that same thing, she says it is the love of self that destroys our peace. I think you'd say this. Uh, uh, and another, um, I think it was previously you mentioned this as well. Then says, while self is all our life, we stand ready continually to guard it from mortification and insult. But when we are dead and our life is hid with Christ in God, we shall not take neglects or slights 
to hunt. We shall be deaf to reproach and blind to scorn and insult. Then she comments, uh, she quotes 1 Corinthians 13, Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunt not itself, is not puffed up. I think somebody yesterday did comment on this uh, chapter uh, when we were talking about meekness. Indeed, this is uh, what meekness uh, is all about. Is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not his own, is not provoked, taketh not account of evil, rejoiceth not in unrighteousness, but rejoiceth with the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love never faileth. Now, so the love of self destroys peace. It's interesting because um, Christ is saying, learn of me. And Christ is the Prince of Peace. Now, so I think here what I'm saying is that we have a choice. If we want Christ to abide in our hearts, we can't have self and Christ at the same time. So peace is the opposite of self. Those are two separate governments. If we need the peace of God, the Prince of Peace, to abide in our hearts, that means self has to be dethroned. It is the love of self that brings unrest. And, and, and it's interesting because if you think about this issue of rest, God has said it in many places throughout the word. I mean, today is called the Sabbath rest. Mm. And I wonder what God means when he says, you must rest. Because there's so much unrest in the world. Uh, you notice that when you read in Leviticus, uh, God had commanded these people that uh, there was different Sabbaths. So there was the weekly Sabbath is the Sabbath. But you also have, uh, after seven years, there was uh, a rest that was pronounced, proclaimed to all the lands to rest. Then you had the Jubilee. Every 50th year, after four, um, seven by seven. The following year, the 50th year, was Jubilee. Again, it was rest. Now, the text that we are looking at here, God is saying, come unto me, and you shall find rest. So, again, when you read in Revelation, yeah, I was thinking about this issue of rest. Um, we are told that um, those who worship the beast and his image, they do not rest. In Hebrews chapter 4, we are told that the rest of the Lord is still here. In fact, let me just read that one. Hebrews chapter 4. That's Hebrews chapter 4, verse, uh, verse 4. Um, because you see, this rest is directly opposite to self. So you see, I think, um, maybe let's read Hebrews 4 first. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 4, if anybody is able to read for us. Uh, Seem to get it from you. I'll read. Thank you. Thank you. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his work. I think it's the next text as well. And in this place again, 
if they shall enter into my rest. Amen. Now, if if you 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 study that chapter, thank you, Sister Anna. Um, there's um, there's uh, there's there's a reminder of the rest, weekly rest, the Sabbath rest. But the rest that Hebrews four is talking about is deeper than um, rest, as it sounds. This is speaking of spiritual rest, resting in the Lord. You know, when uh, I, I heard somebody say, when we are born again, or when we are uh, uh, born again. Um, now, what that means is, we are resting from our own works. In fact, Sabbath, I believe this is why Sabbath makes it, uh, uh, why Sabbath is called the seal of the living God. On the Sabbath, Sabbath is like um, the crowning act of the power of God. Sabbath uh, uh, carries with it so much truth that shows uh, the universe uh, the power of God to take away you know the the cares you know the, this matthew 11 28 is encapsulated in the sabbath commandment but it's more than just resting physically you know when god rested on the sabbath it wasn't because he was tired he was resting from his works so he's saying as i rested you need to rest now this statement, it is self that brings unrest. You know, when self is in the heart, when I am full of self, I'm thinking about me, I, myself. This rest I will never experience that God wants to give me. When he's saying, come unto me and I'll give you rest. I will never experience if self has a place in my heart. So it's such a profound um, uh, and inspired statement which is so true and it is in harmony with uh, the scriptures wherever you read now i wanted to end by saying i think i had already mentioned this point that the final issue because the controversy is going to come to an end and the issue is about rest who are we going to worship now you have the people who have the seal of the living god and the people of the seal of Satan, basically. And those who have the seal of Satan, they are content that they will worship man. That means they will retain self. You, you see, the devil doesn't mind uh, who you worship because he knows if you don't worship God, if you worship yourself, by default, you worship him. So there's a lot of people who say, oh, I'm not religious, I'm not this. They're worshiping self. And they worship the devil. So, so at the end of it all, those who experience rest are the ones who have um, allowed Christ, the Prince of Peace, and substituted or replaced or dethroned self and allowed Christ to come in the act. So we can't have it both ways. May God help us that we will choose Christ. And when we choose Christ, we shall find rest for our souls. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that, uh, for that uh, deep uh, insight into uh, the reading. Uh, it's interesting, the quote from the Mount of Blessing, what I picked from it is that when I die from self, I'm dead to reproach and blind to insults. Thank you very much for that. Uh, yes, I, I, I see. I see. You've put the quotation on the on the on, on the chat. Thank you. Uh, uh, prayer retreat ministry. Uh, good morning. Please go ahead. I think it's it's me. 
Uh, thank you, Sister Martha. And, good morning, uh, Sister Kezia. Good morning and uh, happy Sabbath to everyone. Yes, um, you, you see, um, when I'm looking at everything else, I see that um, the key to, to salvation is dying to self, as we have been talking, and it is, it, that is the key. If we are not dead to self, then nothing that we can do can um, help us to, to enter into the kingdom of God. It reminds me of those that group. Um, the Holy Spirit is only given to those who have surrendered self, who obey. When they when we have surrendered self, we will be able to obey the commandments. But it's the surrendering of self first. Then, obviously, doing the commandments of God will not be an issue. Uh, because um, you have surrendered, you want to do what God has said. You, 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 you cease to exist yourself. It's God who is leading. I'm just uh, looking at this sentence, which says, "We shall understand that the value of our work does not consist in making a show and noise in the world, and in being active and zealous in our own strength." Um, a lot of times I think um, we see that the work of God is, is being done mainly by people who have not surrendered themselves, who are doing it in their own zeal and their own strength. This is, you see that, you know, uh, oh, these people are giving good books, books, books. Then after, after a, a short time, it all fades out. Because this uh, mostly it's because they've gone on their own zeal. And they and they and it's it's being done in their own strength. Whereas if we every morning we surrender, we die to self to surrender to Christ and say to God, what will you have me to do today. You know, sometimes I shudder when I pray on my own to say, Lord, what do you want me to do today? And the things which God will lead you to do that particular day will be so amazed. I pray that each one of us here on this platform Instead of us, us asking for things from God, mm -hmm. to kneel down every morning and say, Lord, here I am. And to, um, I've given myself to your service. What would you want me to do today? May the Holy Spirit lead me to do what you want me to do today. I tell you, it is mind-blowing. Because sometimes you won't even want to say that prayer. <laughs> you, you, you won't even want to say that prayer to say, Lord, I, I know I have to ask you what you want me to do today because the Lord will give you what he wants you to do that day. If you are sincerely asking what you, you want him to do. Instead of us saying, oh, this, please, this, that, that, that. Let's be, let's learn to be servants of God and ask God what his plan for, for you is for that day. And he gives it on a daily basis. It's not, he doesn't want to give us for, for the whole year that this, this, this. No, no, no. That particular day, what did you want me to do? Thank you. Amen. Amen. That is so deep. So uh, the value of our work does not consist in making a show <clears throat> and noise, but it 
depends on the proportion of the Holy Spirit that has been imparted to us. May God help us that we'll be surrender self and build on the rock that is himself and pray that prayer that use me today. What would you have me do? Thank you, Sister Kezia, for that. Thank you. Sister Hope, please go ahead. And uh, as Sister Kezia is sharing this, the, that thought, you know, um, it's, it comes back again, as indeed God has given us work to do, but more. Uh, in, in perhaps it's a question, uh, because I've been uh, not I, but the, the Holy Spirit impresses, uh, has been impressing to uh, show us how do we keep this rest, and particularly as our elder was saying that even the Sabbath rest. Um, I'm perturbed when. Uh, I, 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 we acknowledge, I'm, I'm sure also in your church, or maybe our church, in our home, the Seventh Adventist Church, when we tend to bring in, for instance, Women's Day, Men's Day, Children's Day, International Day, uh, Pathfinder's Day, all that we have to do with the day, and I'm going, hang on a minute, but it's the Lord's day. Uh, perhaps it's a thought and it's a question. How would we, because as, as we're saying that it's the Holy Spirit, it says the value of our work is in proportion to the impart, in, impartation of the Holy Ghost. Uh, yes, we have to have the work. Uh, God has given us to sound the message, the three angels' message, and to proclaim these messages that people may know them. And uh, God, as Christ said, he knows his people where they are, and you bring them into the fold. But how do we... Um, I want to hear what we think of, particularly when we are saying that it's the Lord's Day, and then we bring all this together. Because uh, it, 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 we know that the enemy goes in everything. And we have to ask God for the spirit of discernment so that we are not driven because we, oh, okay, we need to bring people in the church. Let us go with this. And then we miss the point to know that Christ wants us. And we know when we do all those, uh, uh, those days and we put our own, we have no rest. We find we have no rest, but let's um, uh, find out what others think of this. That's yes. A question. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, the question is out to the forum. Uh, and the as you are thinking about the question, uh, a text comes to my mind. I can't remember exactly where it is. Um, in connection with the question that Sister Hope has raised, because I think these are our own pleasures that we will be putting out. The text that comes to my mind is, if you refrain, if you call the Sabbath a delight and refrain from doing your own things, then blessings will come. I'm paraphrasing, but there is the question what, 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 how does that, how do all these other days that we have created, how do we justify, how do we, yeah, how do we, um, in line with uh, doing what God delights on his holy day and the days that we've given, how do those two marry up? Uh, your thoughts, please, to Sister Hope's question. Uh, 
Amen. Can I uh, share some thoughts? Uh, maybe some may, may share their thoughts as well. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Sister Hope, for bringing that up. Um, this is the reality that we have um, in our churches. Um, um, it's simply because uh, we are led by the flesh. Now, I wanted to to first of all read the text that I've shared there. Uh, it's everything is in harmony with what we've been discussing. I don't think we are um, we are uh, having a detour or anything. I think this these are very important things to, to think about. Uh, notice uh, in Romans, I've just caught, caught um, um, shared um, part of uh, Romans chapter 8. Um, um, and you notice here what the apostle is doing is contrasting um, the work of the Holy Spirit and the work of the flesh. Uh, when he talks about the flesh or self, you see, this is the same thing. When we say self or the flesh or the carnal mind is one and the same thing. So when he's talking about being carnal minded or, or the flesh is saying the same thing as being led by self. Now what that does, that conflicts with the Holy Spirit. So we have to be clear that there's only one software that can operate. It's either the flesh or the spirit. And I'm going to bring this to the church as well. So it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Again, the issue of peace comes back. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Now notice here, it's not what we do. Yes, God hates the things that we do, but it's the software that he hates the most. Because everything we do is because of the so software, that, the operating software. So the carnal mind, is that is what God hates. So this is why we can't produce any good. You know, this is why the Bible says, you know, our righteousness is as filthy rags. God, even if we do good things, you know, there's people actually do many good things, but they're doing it with the wrong software. So in the eyes of God, it's all filthy rags. Because of this, he hates the carnal mind. God hates the carnal mind. It is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Then he says, so then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. I think Brother J.B. was saying this earlier. Verse 8 is very simple, and uh, it's straightforward, but it's also profound. As long as we remain in the flesh, we cannot please God. Hebrews says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that means I cannot have faith and still have self at the same time. True faith is living by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is being led by the Spirit of God. This is true faith, the faith of Abraham, saying, what would thou have me to do? Submitting fully to the leading of the Holy Spirit. This is true faith. Then he says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. The Bible is very clear. God 
is either the spirit of God is striving outside. This is why when he's speaking to this church in Laodicea, the spirit is outside knocking. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock because he's outside. Laodicea has the audacity to kick out the spirit who is leading the church. And this is why we have problems we have because the spirit is outside. I mean, this is speaking of us as a corporate. And then it says, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead. Speaking of dying to self. Once the spirit enters the, the mind, the body is dead. Not physically dead, but we are dead to the cravings of the flesh, to the cravings of self, to the cravings of the carnal mind. It's dead because of sin, but the spirit now is life because of righteousness. Now, Sister Wop was speaking of uh, the situations we have where we have this day, that day, that day. Now, we only have to, to look in the Bible, whether that is in any, is in harmony with scripture. And we shall see that is not in harmony with scripture. And we are doing many other things that are not scriptural. You know why? Because we have allowed the flesh to lead us. And you will hear many reasons. This is why you see there's more budget for, uh, what is this other department? Social something than evangelism. You see more people attend for social events, social gatherings, than for book distribution or for prayer. It just shows you uh, the bigger problem, that we have a big problem in Laodicea. That is, the spirit is outside. That means self or the flesh. We have um, leadership that uh, is being led by the flesh, that want to please people. I'll finish by reading this. Because most of these events and these days are meant to please people. Um, now the Apostle Paul says this in Galatians 1 verse 10. He says, if I please men, then I'm not a servant of God. Uh, let me just make sure this is what it says. That's Galatians 1 verse 10. It says, For do I now persuade men, O God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be. Notice, I should not be the servant of Christ. So those who are called servants are the ones who are led by the Spirit. <laughs> And, and I think what Mother Kesia was saying is so profound and is so true. And the reason why uh, many of us, I think she said uh, in one of the paragraphs, probably it was the previous paragraph, but the reason why we do not yield to the leading of the Spirit, we know the consequences that such yielding will bring. That means we we'll have to throw away all our programs. You have to trash all those programs and let the Holy Spirit give us programs. Now, the leadership doesn't want to do that. We know the consequences of letting the Spirit lead because the Spirit is going to tell us that today we're going to spend this whole afternoon serving soup in the, in the, in the street. And nobody wants to do that, would like to sit in, you know, mm -hmm. slumber and debate so really, um, there's consequences. When the spirits start to lead, then we're going to lose control. But we have leadership that does not want to lose control. So they'll cling on to power and continue to give us days and events. But um, yes, uh, it, it, it's, I think it's clear from the scripture that uh, shows the spirit is not leading. That is deeply profound uh, because she also goes on to say the value of our work 
does not consist in making a show and noise in the, in the world. But the value of our work is in proportion to the impartation of the Holy Spirit. And if we do not surrender self, there is a problem. We are not able to. We will not be able to have rest, the Sabbath rest, the rest that we are being invited to. Thank you also for those scriptures that you gave. That's profound. Thank you. Can I just say something, Sister Martha? Absolutely. Please do. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I was uh, listening to um, Sister White, some of the the testimonies to the churches, right? And uh, uh, talking about Paul, no, it was, um, yeah, it was uh, one of the speakers talking about Paul when he totally surrendered. He, Paul, we know Paul, he totally surrendered to God and um, he, he did not look at self whatsoever. And when he came to Rome, he was in chains. And people were coming, you know, all Christians were flocking to see him while they were going to, on their way to Rome. But he was not worried about the chains which he was in. He was worried more about how is he going to preach now in, 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 in Rome? When he is in this state of chains, Lord, how can I be? How, how are you going to use me there in these chains? He was not worried about his status or whatever, but he was more worried about uh, the gospel. And yet people were coming to flock. He was not moved by all those people who were coming to see him and to see all oh, the famous Paul. No. He was, he was praying in his heart that how is he going to preach in, in Rome? How is he going to address to the high authorities in these chains? And definitely that was God's plan for him to come in those chains because he, he, he had the opportunity to, to do God's work in those chains. So when we have totally surrendered and when we are asking each day to say, what is your plan for me today? We know God is going to take us to think, you know, we, we will not even look at the circumstances of what we have or what we, he will do his work through us. And that's what he is looking for. Those people who are willing to be used by him and not even look to self, whether you are you are going through what or what, but he totally surrendering that God can use us. Thank you. Amen. Amen, Sister Kezia. That is so beautiful. It actually shows you what surrender looks like. I mean, the mindset of Paul. How am I going to be used in these chains? If you consider that Paul was one of the most, uh, uh, what word shall I use? He was a very high status person. He was, I think in this day and age, would be calling him a theologian, the so-called theologians, the PhDs and so on. And yet he was only concerned about how he would, how he could best represent God. That is so profound. Thank you, Sister Kezia. Uh, thank you, Elder Desire. I see your hand is up. Please share. So I know the time is up, so I'll, I'll, I'll just be quick on this one. Yes, um, my powerful thoughts. Thank you for, for sharing. Um, I just wanted to, to, to say also that uh, uh, in response to sister hope i mean because you know we should be able to examine ourselves i mean as individuals and also as a corporate um that prayer 
uh, that uh, Mother Kezia is suggesting that we should be praying, which is what the Bible tells us. I mean, Jesus himself had no plan for himself. Uh, I think we're going to come to 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 learn about that. Now, I think probably it's in this chapter somewhere where she also says that uh, Jesus did not plan for his life. Um, but also, I wanted to say, in as much as we need to ask God as to what his thoughts, what his will is for us on a daily basis, we should be doing the same as a church. Instead of um, spending so many hours in board meetings and spending so much hours planning for what should happen to the church. I mean, I wonder how often do we as a church spend hours in prayer asking for the Holy Spirit to give us programs for the church? I don't know. Uh, but if you look behind the scenes, these so-called programs, somebody scratches their heads and they come back and they say, I think we can have a Pathfinder's Day on such and such a day. Um, this is not how the apostolic church was functioning. Those people spend more time in prayer and the Holy Spirit would give them programs. Sometimes they wanted to do certain things and then the Holy Spirit would say, no, not now. Paul wanted to go and preach somewhere in Asia, but the Holy Spirit forbade them. Mm -hmm. You can't go there. So I wonder, as a church now, how much time do we spend praying for programs? Maybe something that we should think about. But surprisingly, even though we don't spend even a minute, but the church is full of programs. I wonder whose programs those are, if God has not given us those programs. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Elder Desire, for your thoughts. Thank you. Sister Hope, I don't know if uh, I'm sure you had some thoughts yourself before. Uh, uh, well, I don't know if you've got any further comments on what has been said. Um, I think it, it, it has been... Um mentioned we have to pray and we have to pray that we are led by the spirit of the living God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I think we'll bring our study to an end then. And thank you everyone for for being here. Sister Hope, do you mind giving us the closing prayer? to uh, end this session. Okay, let us pray. Our well, kind and heavenly Father, we indeed come before you thanking you for the opportunity you've given us to listen to you and as the Holy Spirit, uh, we believe and we trust has been upon us, each one of us individually, but also collectively as a people, as a church. Uh, we come before you, Father. Um, we acknowledge that self must die. And to pick up that cross, we have to deny ourselves daily. Uh, have mercy upon us where we have not. And uh, we are asking that, Lord, that uh, you may work upon us and work upon our hearts that we may always and um, every opportunity that is been given to mm. us to ask of you lord oh, and uh, to trust in you lord as your word says that when we commit our works to you god you will establish our thoughts so it's help us that we keep our minds uh, upon Jesus Christ uh, as he continues to teach us, to guide us through the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can have the spirit of discernment in all that you desire us to do, uh, the work, whatever it is, also in our homes. 
thanking you, Father, for the lessons that we have heard. And um, uh, we are praying, Father, that you may continue to bless us as you bless us with these messages uh, that, Lord, we do not just sit on the messages and eating and masticating of your word, but to be able to share it. Uh, because indeed sharing is caring and Christ came to share. Uh, so because he cares for us so that we may walk in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. We are so thankful for your maidservant that you have led. We are so thankful for those who have shared their thoughts and uh, those also praying in the background and all that we have to learn and unlearn. We are so thankful for that. Uh, so continue to bless us today. You are the Lord of the Sabbath. May our thoughts be on you, our praises on you, our walk with you, our hand on you, our feet on you. Uh, from the soles of our feet to the crowns of our heads, Father Lord, as you bring us together in such a holy convocation day to praise you, to glorify you. Uh, uh, it, it is a song of prayer. Bless us, Father. And those who are unable to come to church, also bless them. You know their reasons why. And all that we have to hear and the ministers that you have provided for us to listen to, please, Lord, may the spirit of the living God be upon them and upon us that when we go and come out, we will know uh, that indeed we've been with Christ. It is a song of prayer. Thanking you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for the prayer and thank you for your presence in this study by God's grace. We shall meet again tomorrow morning to continue. Happy Sabbath. And I'll hand over to the platform manager now. Amen. Thank you, Sister Martha, for the reading this morning. Thank you, brethren, for tuning in. May God bless you. I wish you a wonderful Sabbath wherever you are. And let's keep each other in prayer. And let's keep praying for the upcoming prayer retreat for our ministers and for traveling messes and for good health. Uh, the enemy will try and forbid others to come. But uh, let's wrestle in prayer that uh, all those that God has appointed that they should come uh, will have an opportunity to come. Uh, uh, let's also continue to pray for the uh, health expo uh, that we'd like to do. Uh, there's a few things that we do not have at the moment. Public liability insurance. Um, the we were liaising with uh, Newtown Church. Um, but uh, they're still um dithering uh, we pray that god may move the people who need to move turn the hearts of those who need their hearts tend so if it is will if it, if it is will that we should have the health expo uh, but we can only pray and let god do what uh, we can do for ourselves god bless you brethren i'm sure there there will be sabbath school uh, the sub the platform will be open for Sabbath school at ten o'clock from Eldam Vekis Church, and then uh, in the evening, uh, the Adventist Home uh, session is still running. Uh, I had last week uh, there was uh, uh, very low attendance, and the session did not go ahead. Uh, Sister V was waiting. But uh, let us join in, if we're available, please, this evening from, uh, I believe, 6.45 song service, and then the session starts at 7 to 8. May God bless you, brethren. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Amen.